Hey there, my wedding planning friends, and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, thanks so much for clicking on my video. I'm Emily Summer, I'm a wedding planner based in Montana, and I make weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice. So today we're gonna chat all about sparkler exits and kind of just wedding exits in general and go through kind of my own personal thoughts on them, some pros and cons, and maybe some ideas if you're thinking about having a sparkler ex exit or some kind of exit at your wedding. Okay, so sparkler exits. Um, they've obviously become very, very popular in the last like five years or so at weddings. And if for some reason you have no idea what I'm talking about and you don't know what a sparkler exit is, that is when at the end of the evening or at some point in the reception part of your wedding, you would have what is called a sparkler exit. And that is when all of your guests that are remaining line up and kind of create like an aisle way for you and your partner to walk through. And on either side of the aisle are all of your guests lined up in a line with sparklers and they kind of hold them over the middle where the aisle um, of the aisle where you guys would be walking through. And then you and your partner either run or walk through or dance in the middle, kiss in the middle, and it makes really cool photos. Okay, now I'm gonna be completely honest about sparkler exits in general. Um, and this is probably gonna be a little bit of a hot take and might take you by surprise but I am actually not really a fan of sparkler exits. And, or rather, maybe I should say I have a love-hate relationship with them as I love the photos that come from a sparkler exit. They are beautiful, they're super fun. But I have to say, after doing, I don't know, 50 weddings that have included sparkler exits, it has gotten um, pretty redundant. It's no longer as like unique and fun and something different at a wedding as it was when they, were, when they first started. Um, and it's also one of those things that a lot of wedding vendors kind of loathe <laughs> at weddings. And that isn't to say that you shouldn't do one. Um, if that's something that you wanna have at your wedding, by all means, do it. I just wanted to kind of provide maybe a little bit of an insider kind of scoop on what it's like to do a sparkler exit and kind of from the perspective of wedding vendors that are the ones that kind of execute um, this to happen at your wedding. So from a planner's perspective, uh, some of the cons that I find with doing a sparkler exit is, um, the timing of it all. So this is a very big factor to consider if you're thinking about doing a sparkler exit or any kind of exit in general at your wedding. If you plan to do a sparkler exit and have it be at the end of the evening, or even if it's not at the very end of the evening, pretty well into the night you are going to want to do your sparkler exit. I know um, some people will opt to have the sparkler exit a little bit before the end of the evening, so not an actual exit at the very end of your wedding, but a little bit earlier. And the reason for this is likely your photographer package is only going to cover up to a certain number of hours and likely uh, that's not going to be the ending time of your wedding. So if you want to have a sparkler exit or some kind of formal um, choreographed type of exit, you likely want that to be documented by your photographer that you're paying. So you either need to make sure that you are paying your photographer to the end of the evening or that you are kind of moving that a little bit ahead of time so that you can get photo coverage of it before their photography, their hour package ends for the night. So if you are doing a sparkler exit and sparkler exit in particular, I find that a lot of vendors would probably dislike this a lot more if it was actually at the very end of the wedding. Uh, the problem with moving it sooner and having it for just kind of the photo purposes, while it does work very well in that sense and you do get your photos and it's a little bit easier to coordinate people at the end of the night as maybe a few less drinks have been uh, consumed, it does take away so much from the actual wedding reception and kind of what's going on. And it can completely just interrupt the the, old, the whole vibe and overall um, kind of momentum of the, of the reception and of the dance floor. And DJs in particular hate this quite a bit um, for that reason, as if you have a good dance floor going, uh, the whole job is to make sure that they are providing an environment and music that's going to get all of your guests on the dance floor and having a good time. And to completely interrupt that in the middle of the reception can be really difficult to get back into. So um, when organizing a sparkler exit, that can take up to like 20 minutes just to get everyone in line, get everything lit, and then have enough time for the couple to go through a couple of times to make sure that you're really getting the, the photo opportunities for that. So that's something to consider and if that's something that you really don't want to deal with or you're concerned about the interruption of your wedding reception and kind of annoying your guests with that and having that weird awkward moment where 
you are on the dance floor and then having to stop and do a, an activity and then try and get back into the momentum of a dance floor, it can be really tricky. And at this point, some people might even choose to leave as there is kind of like this natural break and this lull in the reception. And some people might be like, oh, it's getting kind of late. We should just leave anyways. So if you do really, really have your heart set on a sparkler exit and you want those photos and you want to do that, I highly recommend figuring out a way that you can do this as your actual wedding exit because it does make a really great way to kind of end the evening, be like, okay, this is the end. Everyone go home. Like this is, we're going to go our separate ways. Time for you guys to go have your shuttles ready. And it works really well as an actual like ending to your evening. Another thing to consider with sparkler exits is making sure that your venue will allow that. Um, I know here in Montana, summer months are our busiest for wedding season, but that can also be um, really bad fire season here. And if you are in a place where that could be a potential, sparklers might not be allowed at your venue. And regardless of fire season or not, a lot of venues don't don't um, allow sparklers or open flame of any kind. So that's something to definitely look into if you're considering a sparkler exit. Another note on sparklers is um, if you plan on doing them, if you're considering having, having a sparkler exit, make sure that you have somebody that's going to be in charge of coordinating this. And so ideally you wanna have a day of coordinator, a wedding planner, somebody there that can also assist with uh, making this happen so that it goes as quick and efficient as possible. Uh, it also can be tricky to time the actual lighting of the sparklers and make sure that you have everyone kind of getting um, lit at the same time so that you are maximizing the amount of time that the sparklers are lit. Those things can burn very quickly and that only gives you a finite amount of time to actually get the photo that you want with all of these sparklers lined up and you in, in between them. So if you're hearing me talk about sparklers and you're like, mm, maybe they're not as cool as I thought. Maybe that's not something that I really want to have at my wedding, but you still want to do something kind of cool, maybe an organized exit or have some sort of cool photo opportunity similar to what a sparkler exit provides. Here are some alternative ideas. So if you are somebody that just likes the sparkler exit for the photo purpose and not necessarily for an actual exit or having any sort of formal exit from your evening, if you don't care to have any sort of organized event at the end of the night, you just kind of want to party and dance to the last song and then leave with everybody. Another opportunity to get kind of cool photos like this is to do something unique at the end of your wedding ceremony. I've had some couples that will have guests um, toss toss something at the end of the ceremony and you can get a very similar photo and still have guests in the background and have a really cool photo of you and your partner at the end of your ceremony aisle. One wedding in particular that this reminds me of is one I did last summer where we had dried florals that each guest gave, um, was given at the beginning of the ceremony. So not only was it like interactive for all of your guests and it's a little bit easier to communicate and coordinate during a ceremony than it is at a reception. Um, they each had a little cone of dried florals and at the end of the ceremony, um, everyone tossed the florals into the aisle as the couple walked back down the aisle. So not only did you get those really fun interactive photos of the guests kind of interacting with the couple, but you also got really cool photos of the bride and groom at the end of the aisle with all these flower petals in the air. And then we took an extra opportunity and kind of did a few more at the end of the aisle with my staff and I to kind of stage some better um, photos to really get those floral details in there. And that's something you can do as well if just the photo purpose is a lot more important to you than the actual exit. And there's a few other ideas you can do in the same concept of having a photo op at the end of your ceremony. Instead of rose petals or dried florals, you can do rose petals. You could do bubbles. You could do um, confetti and make sure it is biodegradable. Don't throw anything into your aisle that isn't going to be naturally um, biodegradable, absorbed by the earth. Um, don't do rice, don't do pearls, don't do anything that is going to have to be cleaned up at the end of the ceremony in case it doesn't get cleaned up because then that is more work for you or for somebody and also it's not as great for the environment. So choose an option that is going to be environmentally friendly and also easier on you and or your wedding vendors for when it comes to cleanup. Another thing that I have seen, I have not personally done at any of my weddings, but I think that they make really cool photos and it's kind of a fun interactive thing to do with your guests at the end of the evening. If you are not somebody that is going to be having a really um, wild dance floor late into the night, if that's not what your top priority is, then this is probably going to work a little bit better for you. And that is lantern releasing at the end of your evening. So similar to sparkler exits, you get these really cool photos of lit lanterns in the sky and you can include all of your guests in this photo. You can do it of just you and your partner. Partner, but basically you would have um, you and your partner and whatever guests are included light uh, lanterns and release them into the sky and this is kind of a symbol of overall good luck you could write your you know your intentions for going into your marriage on the lantern you can write your wishes whatever
whatever you want to do in this kind of ceremonial lantern releasing um, event, ceremony, whatever you want to call it at your wedding. And again, it's a fun way to get really cool photos, fun way to incorporate your guests, but this will be more time consuming and this will be something that would likely want to be an actual exit or something that you do at the very end of your evening. And again, make sure that you are getting lanterns that are biodegradable. We don't want to be releasing anything into the sky that is going to harm the earth, right? Another like formal, final exit idea is to have a, an actual getaway car and to have your guests kind of line up and cheer you on as you go out onto your getaway car and leave your venue. And this is this is a very um, kind of old fashioned traditional um, tradition when it comes to the end of the evening. How weddings kind of used to go is most couples would leave for their honeymoon either that night or the following day. So they would actually be the first ones to leave the reception or maybe not the first ones, but some of the early ones to leave the wedding reception. And so guests would kind of wish them off. They would get into their getaway car and they'd be gone. Um, so that's something that you can do as your kind of wedding exit is have a getaway car ready to go. Maybe it's a fun classic car or kind of a nicer car that you've rented. Maybe it's decorated. Maybe you've got a sign on the back and have guests kind of cheer you on as you leave in your getaway car. And finally, another option that you can do as kind of a final, um, not necessarily an exit, but a uh, an ending to your wedding night is to do a last dance. And I have seen this trend on like TikTok and Instagram where the couple will do a private last dance. And this is really just your kind of personal preference on which direction you wanna go here, but you can either do a private last dance, which is essentially where you and your partner, either all of your guests have left already, or you have a private place somewhere else that you are performing this. And just the two of you have the very last song together where you are just dancing together and kind of taking in the whole night. Um, the day goes by really fast, the night goes by really fast, and there is not a lot of time where you and your partner are alone together. And if you are, you're likely taking photos. It's not like you are really interacting with each other, taking in the entire day and spending that quality time together. So it's kind of nice to be able to have this extra little time together, especially at the very end of the night as you kind of take in the whole day and, and what you guys just did. On the other hand, you can go a little bit more upbeat and interactive and inclusive with all of your guests in this and have your DJ kind of announce a special last dance. Maybe this is a particular song that you picked out. Maybe it's choreographed. Maybe it's something that you're including your bridal party in. Whatever makes sense for you and um, kind of a personal preference here again. Um, but having a more formal kind of last dance where you get everybody that's left onto the dance floor and maybe it's a, a dance circle where everyone's included, but it's really just you and your partner in the middle and everyone just kind of witnessing and being there with you, or maybe it's something where you just have every single body on the dance floor for this final dance. So when it comes to sparkler exits and wedding exits in general, they can be really cool and you can get some really fun photos out of it, but it's important to know kind of the the pros and cons of each type so that you can make sure you know what you're getting into and know if a wedding exit is something that you really want to do and how you can best execute that. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe to get weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice, and we'll see you next week.